speaker is uh, uh, Jonathan Clark. He's going to tell us a bit about uh, NCF, and uh, I'll let him do it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, my name is Jonathan Clark. Um, I'm going to tell you about this uh, framework we created for NCF. It's to do with CF Engine. So just to get started, a quick, quick question. Who here has heard of CF Engine? Just put your hands up for me. It's really good. Pretty good. Like the Who here has tested CF Engine? Actually, you can give it a try. Okay, less. Who here still uses CF Engine? Okay. <laughs> Not everyone. Right. So, um, maybe I can change your mind about that. <coughs> Let me start by introducing myself. Um, I work at a company called Nomation that I co founded in 2009. Paris, we basically work around config management. Um, I was originally a sysadmin, uh, did lots of infrastructure y things. Now I kind of run a company, so I don't have as much time to be a sysadmin as I would like, probably. But running a company is fun too. Um, I contribute to various free software, uh, a lot of it's a tool that we created, so I presented it here at FastDem in previous years, um, CF Engine, which you've heard of, like most of you anyway, and OpenLab, that was, that was another life. Um, I also help organize some events occasionally, uh, recent DevOps days in Paris, uh, Paris DevOps Group and LLAP Farm, which is, like I said, another life, but also pretty interesting. So this presentation is actually about cakes. Um, that might come as a surprise in the Config Management Room at FOSDEM, but hopefully you'll get the link pretty soon. So for those of you who are not familiar about making cakes, um, the way you do it is you need ingredients. Apparently, I hear, I'm told, that you need eggs, flour, butter, and sugar, and other stuff if you, if you want to do it better. Um, you also need recipes. Uh, so you need a recipe book, or you need your, your grandmother, or your grandfather, or some parents. In general, to pass down recipes to you, your friends, to share them with you. People who know how to do it. Okay, so let's put the case aside for a second and say, who, who is we? Who is the we that created NCF? It's a bunch of CF Engine consultants, some guys from my company, Nomation, some guys that we've worked with um, from another company in Canada called Savoir Faire Linux. Easy name for foreigners. Um, um, we've been working around CF Engine for more than four years now, since version 3 came around. We've been in companies that are tiny, we've been in big companies, we've been in huge companies. I make the difference because one of the companies where we've worked is actually 120 sysadmins packing into CF Engine every day. So that's what I call a huge company. And then there's the normal, regular, large ones. We just have 10 or so people there. And we've seen various uses for it, applying security policies, provisioning new machines, having them configured automatically, disaster recovery, all that kind of thing. And every single time, every customer, every person we talk to, we get the same feedback. Two pieces of feedback. Number one, CF Engine box. Wow, CF Engine is really powerful. It's really small, it's lightweight, it's written in C, it uses like five or eight megabytes of RAM. It's so cool, so fast. Really quick, awesome. It runs on pretty much every platform you've ever heard of. Um, I had it running on my Android phone, it runs on old AIX, HP UX servers, all that kind of thing. Linux, BSD, you know, I should probably mention that, Windows as well. It's an agent based approach. You don't need to connect to the network to get CF Engine to do stuff. It's there, it's sitting there as a daemon or an agent that runs. It's local, it's powerful. And because it's lightweight, it runs every five minutes, but you, so you, can, you can get things done quickly. It's resilient to errors, no network, it's fine, it continues. Um, I know some submarines in the world have CF Engine on board to get it running. The submarine goes out under the waters for nine months, comes back, oh, hey, CF Engine's still running, no problem. It's pretty cool. And it's open source. You look at that, you think, yeah, let's do CF Engine, right? This is awesome, cool. Um, then we get feedback number two um, CF Engine is hard. Yeah. Um, Maybe some of you who've tested it have experienced that. Maybe some of you who haven't tested it have heard that. There's nothing new under the sun, I don't think. Um, four key points that I would point out. Um, there's a steep learning curve. There is for most of these tools. You're learning a new syntax to do new things. But CF Engine syntax is kind of weird. Um, it's not procedural. It doesn't follow the flow you write it in. Um, when you use CF Engine with policy you've just written, you don't actually see any feedback necessarily about what's happening. It doesn't tell you, yeah, I tried this and it didn't work, or I tried this and it's fine. It's, it's quite hard to get that information. You can build it. But. And like all software, 
maybe more open source software than other software, there's bugs. And the developers, great guys that they are, prioritize bugs based on whether there's a workaround or there's not a workaround. If there's a workaround, it gets lower priority, which means that sometimes you have a way to work around the bug, but how do you do that every single time in the code you write, the code being CF Engine preferences? It's pretty hard. You have to go through everything. Sometimes you forget. There's a team of people writing it. You forget. And basically, in the end, at the end of the day, it's too much to do it yourself. Um, you get CF Engine. It's a very powerful agent. But you have to write a lot of things to get it working. You have to build a lot of things. It's been compared in this blog post I linked here um, to flour, eggs, milk, and butter. So if you see where I'm going with the whole cake analogy thing. Um, that CF engine would be the ingredients on this, this basis. So what this feedback is telling us really is that learning to bake your own cakes is pretty frustrating when you don't have a recipe. You can put the ingredients in a bowl, you mix them together, you put them in the oven, and you get something like this. It's okay, it kind of tastes a cake, you hope, um, but it's not really like the solid foundation you want to build your company or your IT services. So, we asked a simple question, can we fix this? Uh, we've worked with lots of different customers, like I said, and for every one of these customers, we found a lot of workarounds, we convinced them, we implemented methods, tools, scripts, whatever, to work around these things. We thought, yeah, of course we can fix this. We've done it n times, we can do it once and for all, we can make an open source project that includes most of these things. We can include some best practices, we can include some clever bug workarounds, that kind of thing. Um, so we accepted the challenge, um, and this is how NCF was born. Um, we actually built NCF as a team of consultants uh, that we were and friends and things. But also with a lot of pushing from you know, patient customers, enthusiastic customers, who really wanted this to work in the way it did. They may or may not have known at the time it was creating NCF. Lots of these ideas came from chatting with them and saying, oh, this should be easier. You know? Um, those guys I can't name <coughs> for privacy, contract, legal, lots of reasons. Um, but anyway, they are also part of the guys that made this happen. So how did we do it? What have we done? Um, we looked at each of the downfalls um, and said, so what can we fix? So there's too much to do it yourself in CF Engine. Um, so what we've done with NCF is provide a structured layout to start with. It's very simple. It's just a Git checkout or a tuple to download. It's got some nice directories in. Um, and you can get a bit of guidance as to where to put your stuff. Um, this is stuff we've learned over the years. You know, there's good ways and bad ways. Some of them work for a bit and break. Some of them work forever. And maybe in 10 years, I'll be proven wrong. But so far, it's a good layout. And what we've done, which is very different from what CF Engine provides now, is there's lots of reusable methods in there. A method in CF Engine, which is a bundle, and you, you call it using methods, comments, it does something. It does one thing, but it does it well. Kind of like um, command line tools in Unix. Um, so we'd have a method, for example, that installs a package, and it does that well. You know, it's got all the bug workarounds built in. Um, to avoid the steep learning curve, what we tried to do is say, okay, there's a lot of weird syntax in CF Engine. Let's put that weird syntax where the CF Engine experts um, can read it, and hack it, and change it, and optimize it. But let's put everyday user in front of a much simpler syntax. So what we've done is actually pure CF Engine. There's no other languages in there. It's not invented anything new um, in terms of language. Um, but the syntax you use for everyday policies is just a subset of standard um, CF Engine syntax. You can actually use one promise type. For those who know CF Engine, there's like 10 or 14 promise types. You can just use one, use the methods promise type. What about bugs? Well, since we have these generic methods that we can call and reuse all the time, it's very simple. It's a bug workaround, you put in a generic method, it's done, sorted, it's dry, you know, don't repeat yourself. You've got it there, you've got it once, every time you use that bundle, you have the bug fixed. Next version of CF Engine, the bug is properly fixed in the code, you remove your workaround. Easy. And we've also kind of, you know, in your own dog food, um, always preaching, do testing, automatic testing. Yeah, we've got automatic tests, so all these bugs, all these things, how should the component work? Test it, see what comes out, comes out, it's fine. As soon as something breaks, as soon as a bug workaround, no longer workaround, works around the bug, um, well, no. And last but not least, um, the lack of feedback. Um, because we have, once again, all these generic methods, 
um, we can build in feedback to them. Every time you run through a package install or a file copy um, bundle, it can print out a little line saying, hey, I checked this, but there's nothing to do, or hey, I repaired this because it was wrong. And of course, the feedback format is configurable. You don't always want your logs full of, I checked this, nothing happened. I checked this, nothing happened, because I get to boring. And if you're debugging, it can be nice to turn it on. So basically, what we're saying with NCF is, screw baking. <laughs> we don't want to go baking or learn to bake. Let's just go and buy some cakes. These ones look pretty good, right? I've actually got to tell you, when I was doing the slides yesterday, I ended up at the end of the day, I really need to eat some cake. <laughs> so bad. Um, so NCF, what is NCF? NCF is a framework. It is not a config management tool. The config management tool underneath there is CF Engine. It's a framework that runs in pure CF Engine code. There is no other code in there. Um, and it helps you structure um, your CF Engine policy. So um, by providing these reusable single purpose components, which are calling methods, they're the, really the body of NCF. And the whole thing, of course, is open source, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it at FOSDEM and GPRB3. And I just lied. Um, it's not actually completely pure CF engine. There's also some Python tooling on the side. But you don't need to use that. You don't need that on your servers. Just as a development aid, it can be useful. Um, so there's a couple of Python scripts. Since an example is worth a thousand words, or so I'm told, here's an example. Read that now, maybe a bit small from the back, but uh, basically this is a bit of CF engine code, pure CF engine code, using NCF that installs the NTP package, copies a config file. If the config file was changed, it restarts NTP, so it reads its config file. And if um, well, whatever happens, it checks that the NTP service is running. So there's four lines of code. <coughs> I hope they're kind of readable. There's a lot of light on the, uh, on the board. Basically, um, four actions, and it's five lines of code to do this. The equivalent without NCF in pure CF Engine would look something like this. Um, you've got one promise for each of those four actions. You've got some variables at the top. There's all sorts of attributes here that I've been doing CF Engine for four years. I still have to read the reference manual every time to figure out what attributes I'm actually supposed to use. And this is even a simplistic example. There's actually no feedback. Nothing comes out when you put this into CF Engine, you run it, it'll just, maybe you'll get a, a warning message or two, but it won't tell you what CF Engine is actually doing. So, long version, short version, NCF, no NCF. <laughs> and I told you there's automatic feedback. When you run this through NCF, you get something like this on your console. This is with uh, debug logging enabled, debug for NCF, not, not CF Engine debug, because that's, that's just crazy. Um, basically, you get one line for each of those promises we saw earlier. So the top one is saying the promise was kept, um, the package NTP is already installed, we don't need to change anything. Cool. Second two lines, well, lines two and three are saying the promise was repaired, something changed, so we actually edited the config file, it was not up to date, and therefore we restarted NTP. And then the final promise, checked that NTP was running, it was running, fortunately, so we just restarted it. Um, so how does this actually work? Um, well, for those of you who know CF Engine, it's basically bundles with method calls to call the bundles. For those of you who don't, um, <coughs> bundles in CF Engine are a way of containing a set of promises. I guess they're equivalent of a module in Puppet or a, a recipe in Chef, roughly. Um, and you can pass parameters into this. That's what we've done. We've created a lot of bundles in CF Engine. Um, that you can use. So what we did in this example is we have an NTP bundle that's called out to four um, sub-bundles. I only put three on the slide for some reason, but there's four. And they all in turn call out to another bundle at the bottom which is called logger, which as you would expect sends these log lines, which is it's pretty simple, but it's pretty powerful um, in the end. As you can see, there's several different layers here. We've actually built the whole framework in a layered approach from top to bottom. Um, because the customers we've worked with, usually uh, the guy at the top, or the guys at the top, they don't really care that the Apache.com file or the virtual host or whatever is not working. What they care about is their corporate website is OK. Or not. So we've kind of built this down from the services, corporate website level, down to uh, techniques. How do I do stuff? Do stuff being. For example, set up my Apache server, do 
put my baseline on the system that like Remy was saying earlier. Um, we've included this IT ops knowledge level, which is maybe your poor name, but <laughs> hopefully it gets the point across. The IT ops knowledge includes stuff like what is the package name for Apache on your current OS? And you can just call out to a variable, and it'll tell you it's HTTPD, it's Apache 2, or whatever <laughs> OS is decided to call that nowadays. The idea is to build up all of that stuff um, as possible, um, with as much information. And then we come to really the, uh, the core, which is the generic methods. All of these unit tasks do one thing, but do it well. And then underneath there, the supplieries and framework stuff. The core principles we've tried to follow are basically avoiding all the nightmares that we've got into otherwise. So not repeating code, any code, any even like pattern of code should not be repeated. Um, so we've followed the dry principle, don't repeat yourself. Um, KISS as well, I mean that's a simple one, right? Keep it simple. Um, the idea being that users would be able to write configuration management policy without being a CS engine expert. Um, that was one of the prime use cases actually with the companies I was working for when we first came up with this idea. It was, uh, it was a web hosting a web company for web service. They had a big team of CIS admins that dealt with the basic infrastructure. Then they had whole loads of developer team, developer teams. Each team developed one application or one part of an application. And the way they communicated was the development team would provide the code to the ops team. And it would also provide config management files to how to install the application, how to upgrade it. You go from version 2 to 3, you need to change the dependency to read on the database. And they were like, tearing their hair out and trying to write the attention code. So the point was with this framework, they can write their intentions pretty simply. simply and, um, and share And you see all these generic methods I keep talking about. One of the goals here is that the generic method, there's only one, there can only be one. There's not a good way and a bad way of doing it. It's not like a, uh, a library or a forge of modules. Um, we've all seen forges of modules and all projects, you know, there's Apache 1, Apache 2, Apache 3, Apache 4, Apache 5, Apache 6, my way, and so on. It's just crazy. Um, so the point is here with these generic methods, because they do one thing, you can't really improvise. You know, creating a file is creating a file. Restarting a service is restarting a service. But the restarting a service can be implemented in several ways. You know, upstart, init d, uh, one of the other crazy things you know, that people are now using. Anyway, <laughs> I take that. Um, so the point is that creating a new generic method is an objective choice and a subjective choice. It's extensible or it this is a uh, quick list of some of the generic methods that are available already. Um, there's huge numbers of them because we've tried to keep it simple. So if you look at the package ones, we will sure. package install, package install version, package install version, compare. They all do the same thing. They actually all call the same code in the end, but just you can call a simpler version to get a simpler code to write. All this is documented online. Um, each bundle has this kind of doc. This is just a screenshot I took of the website last night. Um, explains what it does, what parameters it takes. And each of these bundles provides return like feedback information as well. So it defines a class. A class in CF Engine is a way of sharing information. It's basically like a boolean, it's like a tag that's set or not set. And each of these bundles will set tags saying whether it performed well or didn't perform well. Because why in my example earlier we had copy the NTP file and then restart NTP if the config file changed. That was one of those results. So, um, I'm running out of time, but I just wanted to share a few words about the status of this project. It's a young project. It started, I think officially the first commit into a positive was like October. Um, it's young, but it's pretty robust because we've built this time and time again for different customers over the past, I don't know, let's say two, three years. So it's not new to us. It's stuff we've done before. It obviously needs more generic methods. I don't know if we call on them at the moment. There's like, I don't know, 30 or 40, but we could do with a lot more. Or something to create users would be nice, for example. Um, but it's being used by quite a few different people. Um, there's lots of testing going into it. Uh, lots of new generic methods. Here. I included the OLO statistics. OLO is an online tool that analyzes your code and, and sees what it does. It's pretty objective again about, about what you do. And that, according to them, um, we're a very young 
product. We have a code base with a very short history. We have a large development team, which I thought was, you know, wow, that's pretty cool. <coughs> Something that we just started. And we have very well commented. So, hopefully I've explained roughly what that was. I've lost the cake um, metaphor there somewhere, but uh, hopefully you understand that NCF is a recipe book um, that goes with the, the flour and eggs NCF. Do we have any questions? Yes. Um, the two independent projects at the moment, but Rudder can actually read in uh, code created by NCF to display it in the web interface automatically. Yeah. Do you think it's easier for people to know CFI numbers first before they go to NCF? My recommendation would be to jump straight into NCF. Um, as a user who's going to write config policy, if you're the config management expert in your company, probably better to learn CF Engine first so you can debug it and fix it and add methods in. Basically, if you remember the different layers I was showing earlier, let's say the bottom three layers, you need to know CF Engine to play with them, to hack them, that's the point. And the layers above can be exposed to non CF Engine users. You can basically look at the docs, copy and paste from example, and figure out how to do why I wouldn't switch to Buffett? I mean, you create a something that's the It's a good thing. But if you did that, so those would be the CF Engine rock slide I had earlier. The really lightweight footprint, the multi OS support, um, what else? <laughs> all of the great things. Like really, to me, it's the lightweight, the open source. Well, I'm in chef open source as well, of course, but um, and the, the, the performance, the multiple OS support. That's really the reason. Yeah, good question. Um, I try, I do, I, I fix that to bugs in CF Engine. Unfortunately, I don't, my job is not fixing bugs in CF Engine. It's often a lot shorter to write a workaround in CF Engine policy than it is to go and hack into find of C, C code. And uh, yeah, it takes time and it's complex. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say like 10 at the moment, like 5 to 10, kind of, you know, um, on, if you're using some weird OS's like uh, Suzy Linux Enterprise Server 10, the default package methods don't work, they really use this weird thing called bug, which is completely broken package manager, um, so we've fixed that, we've patched that to use Super, which is another package manager, which is kind of weird, but works better. That kind of thing. And, uh, copying files, for example, sometimes CF Engine behaves a bit weirdly. You've got to just add a few extra checks. In there. Um, it costs some, of course. I mean, the more more layers you're going through, you've got to have some. We've, we've looked at the impact and it's really lightweight. Um, going through layers and bundles in CF Engine is, is very fast. There's lots of other things in CF Engine that are a lot slower, really. So it, we've seen that running pretty much the same promises with or without, you're going to go from execution time that's like three seconds to like three more five seconds. I think it's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Which slide do you want to see there? So this is the with NCF. Can you see that better? Um, that's the one with NCF, so just basically your five lines. These are one, two, three, four calls out to generic methods. And this um, line here is a if statement, basically. So you only do this one if 
this weird class here has been defined by the so It's the file from template, the name of the destination file, and prepared. Prepared is a term that means you know, check it was not good. And the after is this long thing. I'll leave that and answer another question. <laughs> so you can read it. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. I've myself personally have been using three zero, three one, three two, three three, three four, three five, and three six. <laughs> um, but this framework, I think, no longer supports three dot four. I think we removed something uh, to support there. And I tested it yesterday on three dot six. It's the first beta version came out, and it it works fine. One more, one more question. I'm sorry, I can't quite hear you. There's no specific cloud um, methods in there now. Um, I have been using CF Engine and a similar framework to this in cloud instances though, but just managing them like other than any other server basically. So nothing specific for now. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you.